Welcome back to Sledgehammer Horror, guys. I am Ken Sledge, and let's talk horror. Now, today I'm joined by the beautiful Sydney. Sydney, how are you doing today? I'm great. How are you? I am doing very well. I am so excited to have you here. We had the pleasure of becoming acquainted while we were together at GhoulieCon, and I knew at that moment that we had to make this happen. But before we talk about why you're here, Sid, I would like for the people that don't know you to get to know you a little bit. Um, you are a lifetime horror lover that started creating content on TikTok under the name Horror mm-hmm. Chronicles in September of 2021, and has since gained over 580,000 followers that you get to share your love of horror with. And you've also expanded into a podcast, Hello Sydney, um, where you do deep dives and breakdowns into some of your own favorite movies with House 1985 coming up very soon. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, we, we talked about this a little bit in person, but can you tell me a little bit about why you decided to get started with Horror Chronicles and why that's something you really wanted to push into doing? Yeah, so I, like you said, like I'm a lifelong horror lover. I've been watching this since I like came out of the womb, essentially. And I don't really, like a lot of my friends aren't really into it. So one of my friends one day was like, why don't you just like put like the movies that you watch on TikTok, like just do it. And I was so anti-TikTok at the time because I thought it was like for kids and like, lame so i'm like no 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 and then i was like you know what screw it like what's the worst that can happen and back in the day i had had like a tumblr and when i was like you know 17 16 years old when that was a thing and i had a horror movie tumblr and it did pretty well and i was like you know what i actually missed that like sense of community that i had there and like i feel like i learned so much from people i met through that and let's just try it with tiktok and same thing happened and within a month i had like sixty thousand followers and it's just been growing ever since and i'm so proud of you and um talking about horror and how important it is to you you wanted to continue that journey and get even bigger so you started the hello sydney podcast so what yeah. is so different about doing a podcast than doing the tiktok channel i will say like tiktok you have to like filter yourself a lot which I'm not really a filter girl, so it was kind of like a, it was a learning curve for me for sure, whereas like on the pod, I can just like, I can speak more comfortably and I can speak for longer too, because obviously TikTok, you have like time limits and again, like you have certain things you can say, certain things you can't say, whereas the pod, it's like I can just go on and talk for hours because I could absolutely do that and I don't necessarily have to worry about what I say. So it's just like a forum where I can like speak about the same things, but longer and like more detailed. Sure. And you don't have to censor yourself either. Correct. (laughs) That's big. The thing about that is guys, uh, I have all of Sydney's social media links as well as the podcast and TikTok links. Those are all done in the description. So make sure that you're giving her a follow, make sure you're subscribing to the podcast, leaving a five-star review, make sure you're doing all the comments and all that because it helps to build that social media more than you know, putting us into that algorithm that is so goddamn stingy that we cannot Ugh. figure it out. So Never, um, never will. No, not at all. So <laughs> look at that, you got the TikTok with Horror Chronicles. You have Hello Sydney. Um, how do you manage the time to balance both of those together? It's tough, but I mean... The thing is, I'm watching these movies anyway, most of the time. Like, I'm going to do that in my free time regardless. So sometimes I just have to pay a little bit more attention to them than I might have if I wasn't doing this. But I don't mind that, again, because I just like to, like, share it with everybody. It's always weird now when you can watch a movie for fun. And yeah. not have to pay attention to every detail and analyze everything that you're doing for sure for sure um make sure you guys are following like i said um i was so lucky to be able to meet her and justin uh being able to become friends with them you'll see justin on the channel soon too Mm -hmm. and i can't tell you how expansive their horror knowledge is and how kind and amazing they are so please do yourself a favor go follow her become a part of that family as well so in order for you to do the amazing things you do with horror chronicles and hello sydney Horror had to start for you somewhere. So now, Sydney, I would like to go back to the past and talk about (laughs) what got you started in the horror genre, your first horror movie, and Sydney, the first horror movie you watched was? Uh, So it's tough because I don't, like I said, I've been watching horror since I came out of the womb. So it's hard to pinpoint what my first movie was, but I can honestly say that my earliest memory of something that actually scared me was watching Jaws. And... 
I feel like that's like a common one for a lot of people, but that's the first movie that I like have a vivid memory of having a scene that I'm like, oh my God, uh, this is going to stick with me for the rest of my life. And the fear of deep water is still there. You know, Absolutely. What's under my feet. Absolutely. Forever so, will be. Oh, a hundred percent. This is something we've talked about a lot. Uh, Ashley has the same thing, you know, deep water that she can't see under her feet, huge anxiety for her. So I completely can't do it. it. Mm-hmm. Um, do you remember about how old you were the first time you had seen Jaws? God, I was probably like three or four. And yeah, it's right at that age too, to where you're starting to learn how to swim on your own. Um, mm-hmm. you really love the water and then you see something like jaws and you're like what the f- that's in the water with me no i'm good never again. and like even like in the bath or like in the pool i'm like i'm gonna get eaten right now like i'm about to get killed by this giant massive shark like it screwed me up for a long time still honestly still well and like i said you can't differentiate especially as a kid you know oh that's just fine cause that's salt water in the ocean it's not here yeah, cool. I pee in the toilet. Water's in the toilet. Sharks in the water. Good luck. Sharks gonna eat me. Exactly. Exactly. Um, <laughs> so th- this is a movie that is quite impactful and quite effective. But do you remember who you were with the first time that you had watched it? I don't have like a vivid memory of like who I was with when I watched it. But if I had to guess, it was definitely my dad. He's the one that got me into horror movies, and he would just like have them playing on the TV, and I would just go hang out with him, and like he wouldn't change them. He was just yeah. like, oh, well, you want to be here. Like you're, you're in, like you're locked in. So yeah, if I had to guess, that was definitely his fault. Oh, and he'd hit you with that Kevin Hart. You gonna learn today. Yep. Absolutely. He's like, I got traumatized. Like you're getting traumatized too. Good luck. Right. <laughs> and you know, you talked earlier a little bit about the scene that really impacted you and you watched the scene and you knew you were in for it. This is something that was going to stick with you for a long time. Uh, what was that scene that affected you the most? Yeah. So it's the scene where they're in the pond and they like the kids are like, there's the kids with the fake shark fin. So there's like chaos on the beach because they think there's a shark and it's not, it's just the kids with the fake fin. But then meanwhile in the pond where like Michael and the boys are, the shark's actually there. And the fisherman comes up to him and he's like, Hey, you boys okay over there. And then all of a sudden they all get knocked over and we get this like overhead shot of the fisherman climbing up onto his overturned boat. And from overhead, we can see it, but he can't see it. The shark is underneath him and just like grabs him by the leg and pulls him under. And that scene for me, like I've had that in my memory for as long as I've been sentient. Like I don't remember like a moment where I didn't have that in my mind. (laughs) So that's why I say this is my first movie because I'm like, that is like my earliest, like one of the, like I don't, again, I don't remember being a human without having that in my head. Right. And that's one of those impactful scenes too, because- it's a child. You see these children involved with the scene. Yes. And I've always felt like, you know, as kids, we watch movies through the lens of a child. And as adults, obviously, we watch movies through the lens of an adult. So when we're watching these movies as kids, we're kind of gravitating towards the children characters because that's who we relate to the most. We can understand them. We understand where they're coming from, what they're feeling. We don't quite understand what the adults are feeling. So right. to see them and see a child go through this type of stuff is really, really heavy. And um, to this day, still... One of two movies I've always said, do not remake. Leave this movie alone. Leave yes. it the way it is. Um, yeah. This, this and Back to the Future both. Yeah. Well, no, just don't ever touch Don't them. touch them. Don't touch um, them. No point. Even looking back now as an adult, what would you say your favorite scene from Jaws is? Ugh. God, that's a tough one. I, I almost want to say the same scene. In a weird way, because it's like, it's the scene that stuck with me the most. And it's literally managed to traumatize me and like make me terrified of the ocean. And like, not many things do that to me, like being such a seasoned horror fan, which like, I'm sure you can relate to. So something that can like, even still to this day, when I watch that scene, I like cringe. Yeah. So something that can have that much of an effect on me. I think that's the, yeah, that's my favorite. It's the one that sticks with me the most for sure. Mm -hmm. And this movie does give us some of the best quotes of all time. You know, like the ad Absolutely. You're going to need a bigger boat. Yeah. Um, and then... Why are you son of a... <laughs> that, um, I, this movie is so quotable. 
And it's so quotable. Another favorite I do have to say, just because of like how much dread there is surrounding it, is Quint's like slow, slow death as he just like descends into the open shark mouth. And like that's the most you see of the shark too throughout the whole thing. So you really get a shot of it and you're like in there with him. Right. And I was just going to ask you what kill it was that impacted you the most, but we can, you know, kind of run with that. Um, yeah. And you also get, you know, the blood coming out of his mouth. Yeah. And screaming. And you're really pulling for this guy after you just heard the SS Indiana story. Um, you know, like, God, that's still just to know how drunk those guys were on set. Just still right? really the caliber of acting. I know. And like, that's a shocking one because you really think he's going to make it. Yeah. Absolutely. So, and, you know, with, you know, Jaws, it is a franchise, so I do gotta ask, which film in the Jaws franchise is your favorite? The first one, but honestly, the second one is a close second. I think the second one is very well done. I like how it focuses, like, on the kids, teens, I guess, but, like, teens all in the water. So the first is, like, such a classic, you can't beat it, but I do think the second one is, like, very close for me. Extremely underrated film. Yes. Um, it gets extremely wonky with 3D and the revenge. Oh, you know, God. Yeah. Questionable. Top ridiculous. But um, Jaws 2 gets lumped into those movies. And I'm like, no, no, watch it. Please. No. Like, it's so good. Like, it's, such it's a, a good It's movie. an incredible movie. Yeah. yeah. I think Jaws 2 is phenomenal. Like, I like just watching them back to back because I feel like it's just such a perfect, like, continuation of the story. Right. It is. It's a great double feature. And like you said, we really focus more on the Brody kids in this one rather yeah. than going from an adult point of view so yeah um, i mean we kind of talked about it already and i j uh, jumped the shark um <laughs> or you know I, I went a little early on this one but you know with remakes requel sequels being all the rage is jaws a movie you would like to see remade today or is this one that you want them to just leave alone no absolutely not i don't think they could handle i think there's a couple things they couldn't handle I don't think practical effects are like nearly as good as they are, as they were. I mean, back in like the seventies and eighties where they had no choice, but to need to use them. So right. I don't think they would do the shark justice. And I also think that movies these days, a lot of the times have trouble with the unknown because in the original jaws, Bruce only has four minutes of screen time. Like you right. only see the shark for what, four minutes. I don't know if they could handle doing that these days with still making it as good of a movie. Oh, absolutely. And I think that the payoff of having only four minutes of him, the payoff of only having seven minutes of Robert England's Freddy Krueger in the original Nightmare right. on Elm Street, when you see him, it's that much more effective because absolutely. you're not watching them the whole time. You know, right. throughout the hour and a half, you get desensitized to seeing the killer when you're constantly seeing them. Exactly. Um, so you have that payoff of when you finally see Bruce, you're just like, whoa, like that. Yeah. Is fucking awesome not to mention like your mind fills in the blank so like the first time i heard that the shark's only in the movie for four minutes i was like you gotta be fucking lying like there's no way this shark is in way right. more and then you watch it back knowing that and you're like holy shit like that's accurate that's a hundred and it's weird like you said that's weird to go mm -hmm. back and rewatch that so you yeah, have had an amazing time talking about jaws what jaws means to you being your first horror movie but here for a second i do want to throw a little bit of a curveball at you uh, sure my little buddy ghost face is here and he has ah, a question for you. Perfect. What's your favorite scary movie, Sydney? Uh, <laughs> what is your favorite horror movie of all time? Being named Sydney, I should say Scream. But uh, no, even though that's up there, my favorite of all time is the original Psycho. I love the original Psycho. Can't be beat in my eyes. It's just the experimentation of what they did with that movie. Um, and we always talk about the twist of Psycho. Mm -hmm and how great that twist was. And yes, it's an amazing twist. Um, to be able to live that for the first time was such an amazing moment. But there's so many other things about that movie that are so good. Like when you have the cop's death and you get that overhead shot. Ugh, and back that slow, downstairs. yeah, the slow fall. Yeah, like that is so great watching those scenes. And, um, you know, you look at movies today and I've always said, What Lies Beneath with Harrison Ford and Michelle Pfeiffer, that mm -hmm. was Robert Zemeckis' Psycho. I mean, there's so many shots in that movie that are like Psycho. And so, you know, the bathroom scene is like Psycho. Um, the influence that movie, Scream. I mean, we, oh, we yeah. talk all day about what it Absolutely. Did. Oh, yeah. I don't think modern horror would exist as it is. Not even modern horror. Horror in general, I really don't think it would exist 
as it is if Psycho didn't like break the mold when it did. Right. Yeah. And it, like I said, it's still we still talk about that movie to this day. And Psycho Holds is up. one of the only movies that was so perfect that when they did the remake, they did it shot for shot. They're yeah. Like, and it still sucked somehow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny because like I always tell people, I'm like, look, it's just crazy to me because the first two movies I ever saw Vince Vaughn in were the Psycho remake and mm-hmm. Domestic Disturbance, where he plays that crazy ass stepdad opposite John Travolta. Yeah. So like I started seeing him in comedies and I was like, what the fuck? What is this? this comedy? <laughs> Who is and this? Now, like I go back and watch Domestic Disturbance and I'm like, okay, bro. Yeah. Make Relax. Yeah. Um, yeah. So seriously, it's been an amazing time talking to you, uh, being yeah, able to so hang fun. out with you again for a little bit and talk about what horror means to you and how it started for you. But before I let you go, we always bounce back to the same question. Uh, we're going to go back to Jaws. And what we're going to mm-hmm. do Sydney, is rank this movie on a skull count. Now, we're not ranking it on acting, production, score, direction, nothing like that. We're not being critics. All we're doing is ranking Jaws on how much it affected you on your first viewing. So zero skulls being not effective, five being extremely effective. You can use half and quarter skulls anywhere in the middle. Uh, Sydney, what would your ranking of Jaws be? Oh, it's like a thousand. (laughs) Absolutely a five. Absolutely a five. At my at 29 years old, 29 years, 20 something years after seeing this movie, I literally like even in a pool still get kind of cr- like scared. Honestly, it's affected me that much. I'm like, oh, I don't like the feeling of not knowing what's under there. See, And it's so funny you say that because people that have never seen Jaws mm-hmm. know the da, 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 mm-hmm. da, you know, like we, it's that like, iconic. The- yeah, it, we, there's three scores I feel like do that. What if you've never seen Jaws, Halloween, or Psycho? You yes. still know those scores. Absolutely. You know, for and sure. How iconic is a movie where you've never seen it, and every time you swim, you hear that music, and it's just so menacing. It is so menacing. And I, what I love about that is it really does increase your heart rate because it absolutely starts off slow. And then you get the dun, 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 dun. like it mm-hmm. builds the tension through the score. And like you said, films, whether it's practical effects, use of score, they don't do it like they used to with no. that. Um, no. And I wish we could get back to some sort of semblance of how important a score or an absence of score can be to a film at certain points. That's um, so true. So it's amazing, like I said, to be able to talk to you and learn how this all started for you because i i just love to do that and meeting you guys i knew that this was something i really wanted to do so thank you for taking the time to come and of hang course out yeah thanks for having um, me it was so much fun yeah of course and i know i said it at the beginning guys but we're at the end of the third act the credits are about to roll and the curtain's about to drop but before that happens all of sydney's links are down in the description so please like i said make sure you're following subscribing um it's following on tiktok i don't know much about TikTok. yeah <laughs> whatever you do on tiktok do that do that um, and make sure you're becoming a part of what she does because like i said her horror knowledge is amazing no matter what one guy may say to her on tiktok we got to tell that story <laughs> real quick before i let you go go that was one of the best stories i ever heard do you mind telling that story real quick absolutely not i love to tell that story i get a lot of trolls on tiktok as you can imagine comes with the territory like it is what it is but the one that stuck out to me was a man said, never trust a woman, a female's opinion on horror, to which I replied, yeah, well, 580,000 people do. How many do you have? I fucking love it. Um, like we said at uh, GhoulieCon, that is a mic drop moment. Yeah. Um, Got no maybe, response. I'm sure you're surprised. Anybody that follows this channel <laughs> knows, you know, Ashley, the hard work she does on this channel and supporting women in horror is one of the biggest things for us because the the stigma that comes with being a woman in horror and just how knowledgeable and smart and hardworking you guys are. When I heard that story, I literally cheered and applauded because I was so proud <laughs> of you just being like, suck it. Um, yeah, fuck off. Right. So if you want some more quippy things like that, make sure, like I said, you're following her so you can see update <laughs> on all the amazing things she has coming up for us. Uh, Sydney, please don't go anywhere, my friend. I got a couple more questions for you. Um, Everyone else, if you haven't already, please like, comment, and subscribe. It does help build the channel more than you know. And follow Sledgehammer Horror on social media. Our links are in the description as well. But until next time, keep talking horror, stay what you are, and we'll see you guys soon.